This is Rod Evans, and this is Mini Lecture 20, Taking Personal Responsibility, the Key Decision. The key to personal liberation, happiness, and achievement is personal responsibility. The starting point for your personal liberation is to accept complete responsibility for who you are and for everything you become. You'll empower yourself to the extent that you unconditionally accept that you are where and what you are because of your choices. You'll empower yourself to the extent that you accept that your life will change when you change. Programming against personal responsibility. We've been programmed from, in, from infancy to believe that someone or something else is responsible for much of our lives. When we were, when we were children, if we were fortunate, Others, one or both parents, took care of everything, our food, clothing, shelter, education, recreation, medical attention, and so on. As children, we were passive in the, in the process of our being taken care of, at least if we were fortunate. It is good when parents or guardians can provide for their children. Problems begin, however, when people come into adulthood with the unconscious expectation that somewhere, somehow, someone else is still responsible for their situations and their welfare. Internal Obstacles to Personal Responsibility and Achievement For any goal, there will be obstacles, or else it wouldn't be a goal, but simply an activity. Many, if not most people, will tell you that were it not for impediments outside them, they would be successful and happy and prosperous. Although it is true that some people were born on third base because of prosperous parents, millions of people have overcome difficult circumstances, including poverty. Some of the most difficult obstacles to achievement and happiness are invisible and internal, that is, inside our minds. Those obstacles include negative beliefs, lack of self-confidence and self-esteem, and lack of personal responsibility. Because of the way in which most of us were reared, we have insecurities and feelings of inadequacy and unworthiness. None of this is to blame our parents or guardians who probably did the best that they could. Rather, we all have insecurities about something and parents or guardians can model those insecurities in their child rearing. As young children, we may not have naturally excelled at math and gotten good math grades, leading us to tell ourselves and others, I am just no good at math, as if that state of affairs is unalterable like one's height. In reality, we can get better at just about any skill. Let's look at some equations. Talent, that is, one's natural ability to improve with effort, multiplied by effort equals skill. And also, skill multiplied by effort equals achievement. Note that effort occurs twice in turning talent into achievement. The decision to become better at anything can multiply skill and achievement. Here's another equation. Inborn abilities or talent plus acquired abilities multiplied by attitude equals individual human performance. Because we have the ability to become more skillful with experience and education, and because we can improve our attitudes almost indefinitely, we can greatly improve our achievement even if we are average or a bit below average in inborn talent. Self-limiting beliefs. Your subconscious mind has memorized your comfort zones. Each of us has beliefs about how well we can function at anything we attempt. Salespeople, for example, have beliefs about how well they can, say, attract prospective customers, overcome objections, and close deals. Many of our self-beliefs are based on negative conditioning by parents, guardians, teachers, and others. Many of our self-beliefs assume that we are incapable of becoming better. In other words, many people have a fixed view of their abilities and don't have a growth-oriented attitude. Here's some helpful advice. Never say anything about yourself you don't want to be true. If people, for example, say, I'm no good at math, they are reinforcing a negative self-limiting belief that will disable them from making choices that will improve their math skills. In general, we won't be able to habitually outperform the beliefs we have about our abilities in any area. Fortunately, Babies and toddlers don't have to worry about seeing themselves as failures as they constantly fall as they learn to walk. 
if babies were like most adults, they'd never learn to walk because they'd say, I'm not good at this walking thing. Just keep me in a carriage or a stroller. Children need to be trained to become self-conscious and to develop insecurities. The problem is that uncritically held self-limiting beliefs will, unless we challenge them, limit our ability to become happy and successful. Self-limiting beliefs, which define our comfort zones, are like invisible fences. Those invisible fences do more to limit achievement and happiness than most external obstacles. In his book, Maximum Achievement, Brian Tracy talks about several self-limiting beliefs, such as, I'm too young, or I'm too old, or I don't have any money, or I don't have enough education, or I have too many bills. Brian Tracy has a suggestion for determining whether your situation is unchangeable. Ask yourself, is there anyone, anywhere, with my problem or limitation who has succeeded in spite of it? If the answer is yes, you know that your excuse is not valid. It's not a legitimate reason for your failure to make progress. What one person has done, someone else can do as well. The way out. To accept complete responsibility requires giving up all excuses. Accepting complete responsibility for one's life is difficult, and that is why most people don't do it. But, to the extent that we move toward complete personal responsibility, we empower ourselves. Brian Tracy asserts that we can never give away responsibility. The only thing we can give away is control. Further, we'll feel good about ourselves to the degree to which we feel in control of our lives. To the extent that we give up control over our lives, we lower our sense of self-efficacy and create barriers to achievement and and peace of mind. Our attitude toward personal responsibility. When it comes to personal responsibility, we are on a continuum, a scale from high acceptance of responsibility all the way down to low acceptance of responsibility or irresponsibility. Highly responsible people tend to be positive, optimistic, self-confident, self-reliant, and highly disciplined. Highly irresponsible people tend to be negative, pessimistic, defeatist, cynical, aimless, fearful, unsure, and often neurotic. Note what Brian Tracy has to say about the connection between personal responsibility and control on page 204 of his book, Maximum Achievement. There is a direct relationship between how much responsibility you accept in any area of your life and how much control you feel in that area. In turn, there is a direct relationship between how much control you feel in any area and how much freedom you feel in that area. Responsibility, control, and a sense of freedom or autonomy go hand in hand. The equation looks like this. Responsibility equals control equals freedom. Further, there is a direct relationship between how much responsibility you accept in any area of your life and how much control you feel in that area. In turn, there's a direct relationship between the level of responsibility you accept and how positive and happy you are overall. Degree of personal responsibility then equals degree of positive emotions. And irresponsibility equals lack of control equals lack of freedom. To the extent that people feel that they aren't responsible for their lives or what happens to them, they feel as if they have little control or are out of control. Non-responsible people feel that they are controlled by external forces or other people. The feeling of not being in control, of being powerless, causes people to feel a lack of freedom and a sense of being trapped. The feeling of being powerless and of being trapped will trigger negative emotions such as anger, frustration, and unhappiness. In short, irresponsibility will lead to negative emotions, which will promote further irresponsibility unless those emotions and the beliefs behind them are challenged. Consequently, if we want to be happier and more productive, we need to reduce negative emotions. Peace of mind. Many people rank peace of mind as the highest human good. We can move toward peace of mind only to the degree to which we can reduce negative emotions. A positive mental attitude, along with a strong sense of personal responsibility, can greatly enhance our happiness. But failure to reduce negative emotions will undermine our efforts, taking much joy and pleasure from anything we manage to accomplish. We are conditioned to accept negative emotions as normal and unavoidable. Have you ever met a self-conscious baby? How about a pessimistic baby? How about a baby who gives up trying to walk because it falls down a lot? The negative emotions we experience as adults 
we had to learn by beginning in childhood through imitation, practice, repetition, and reinforcement. Now, if you firmly believe that you cannot reduce your negative emotions, you'll be right. But if you believe that you can challenge the, the beliefs behind the negative emotions and resolve to cultivate a spirit of gratitude and personal responsibility, you can reduce negative emotions. The most common negative emotions. Common negative emotions include doubt and fear and the pair guilt and resentment, which often go together like twins. There's also envy and there's jealousy, which destroys happiness and relationships. Perhaps the most powerful and destructive negative emotion is anger. When anger is expressed inwardly, as when people suppress or repress angry feelings, people make themselves sick. When anger is expressed outwardly, it harms relationships with others. Anger can rob people of sleep, friends, and employment and cause, can cause people to behave irrationally. What causes negative emotions? There are at least four main causes of negative emotions. First, there is justification, occurring when people try to justify and explain to themselves and others why they feel entitled to the negative emotion. Justification and self-righteousness feed on each other. When people feel badly used for any reason, their first reaction is to become angry. The second reaction is to assemble all the reasons they can for why the anger is justified and why they, quote, have every right to be angry, end quote. People often look for others who will agree with their reasoning and their feelings so that they can continue to feel justified in maintaining the anger. Antidotes to negative emotions. We can begin reducing negative emotions by simply refusing to justify them. Tell yourself that there's no need to feel angry. You can refuse to see yourself as a victim. You can refrain from judging the people or situations you are holding responsible for your anger. When you withhold negative judgment, you can short circuit or prevent the negative emotion. It's not an action or an event that causes anger, but rather our interpretations of the action or event. Suppose someone steps on your foot. Would you become angry? Not necessarily. Suppose it was your best friend who accidentally stepped on your foot. Or suppose your spouse was playing footsie. Even if a stranger stepped on your foot clearly by accident in, say, a dark movie theater, you may not become angry. Because your interpretation of events is necessary for your anger, and you can choose your interpretations, you can, to that extent, choose your emotions. If someone does or says something to you that is unpleasant, you can neutralize your tendency to become angry by excusing the other person for some reason. You could say, God bless him, he's probably having a bad day. Instead of judging the person harshly, you can, you can offer the person some slack. A second main cause of negative emotions is identification, that is, taking things personally. You can become angry about something to the extent to which you personally identify with it and see the action as harming you in some way. If someone cuts you off in traffic, you needn't become angry if you don't see that person as if he or she planned to disadvantage you. You can choose to see that person as another vulnerable human being in a rush to go somewhere. Thank you. A third major cause of negative emotions is experiencing a lack of consideration from others. You can become angry when you believe that others are intentionally treating you disrespectfully. Even here, it is your belief or interpretation that is necessary for your negative emotion. Nonetheless, people will sometimes, intentionally or not, treat us in ways that the people wouldn't like if we were to treat them likewise. It is wise, however, to not invest a lot of energy in expecting people to always treat us as we'd like to be treated. In his book, Maximum Achievement, Brian Tracy points out that a sage once said, you should not worry so much about what other people think of you, because if you knew how seldom they did, you would probably be insulted. The point is that we needn't take seriously how strangers think of us. Further, because what we dwell on grows, we can dwell on uh, one minor act of rudeness and magnify it so much that we can create needless suffering, making it difficult to get along with people who could otherwise enrich our lives. You can reduce negative emotions by starving them. You can withdraw energy from them by refusing to justify them, by refusing to identify with them, and by refusing to let others' behavior toward you get under your skin. If someone criticizes you, you can first ask whether you were rude or otherwise at fault. If you were, can, you can apologize and learn from that experience. If someone's negative remark involves immature name-calling, you can choose to laugh it off 
ignore it or say to the critic, you are entitled to your opinion, and then you can move on. Blaming is a fourth main cause of negative emotions and lies at the heart of almost all of them. Nearly all negative emotions depend for their existence on our ability to blame someone or something else for something that is unpleasant to us. The instant we stop blaming, the instant we refuse to blame anyone or anything else for anything, our negative emotions stop just as if a power switch had been shut off. How to shut off negative emotions by using the law of substitution. In the world of self-help literature, the law of substitution is often regarded as a mental law stating that because the conscious mind can hold only one thought at a time, positive or negative, we can deliberately choose that one thought for our advantage. In short, we can substitute a positive, constructive thought for a negative, destructive thought, pushing the negative thought from our minds. Whenever we feel negative or angry for any reason, we can immediately cancel the thought that is causing the negative emotion by saying firmly, I am responsible. The words, I am responsible, switch our minds from negative to positive, calming us while enabling us to deal with our situations more effectively. Personal responsibility, forgiveness, personal empowerment. Accepting personal responsibility and reducing negative emotion will be essential to health, happiness, and personal efficacy. Developing a positive attitude toward yourself and your life will require you to let go of negative emotions, which can drain you of positive energy and impair happiness. Try to think over your entire life and any memory or situation that makes you feel negative in any way. Neutralize any negativity by repeatedly affirming, I am responsible. You are responsible in the sense that you are capable of responding as you choose to current and previous events and memories. What's more, usually whatever our difficulties or problems, we probably got ourselves into them. We were free to choose. In any event, we are now free to choose how we respond to our thoughts and memories. Accepting responsibility for your decisions isn't identical with accepting blame. Although blame looks to the past and says that someone did something and should receive penalty or criticism, your accepting responsibility is forward-looking, emphasizing your power to respond positively in the future. We are responsible for our conduct and the way we respond to situations. The author, Brian Tracy, gives the example of some drivers running a stoplight and running, running into your car. You aren't legally responsible for the accident, but you are responsible for how you respond. You can choose to be calm, mature, and controlled. The situation needn't dictate your response. Releasing attachment to our hurts. Although many people say that from now on they will accept responsibility for their actions and for uh, future emotions, they believe there is some negative experience for which someone else is completely responsible. That person deserves to be blamed and should never be forgiven. Some people will say, if you only knew what that person did to me, you would forever hate that person and carry negative emotion regarding that person's conduct. The problem with refusing to let go of negativity and defending one's attachment to it is that such negativity can interfere with one's peace of mind indefinitely. When people hold on to negative feelings, they can become locked into a frame of mind that makes happiness impossible. When people refuse to take responsibility for their feelings, they are choosing to give events and other people power over their happiness. Unresolved anger and bitterness over things that happened decades ago can impair people's relationships with their spouses, children, co-workers, and friends. In fact, those negative feelings can produce psychosomatic illnesses and heart disease, possibly leading to even early death. Resentment, anger, and bitterness are hazardous to one's health and happiness. Pass it on. As Brian Tracy notes, we become what we teach. Once we begin accepting responsibility for every part of our lives, we'll benefit from encouraging our friends and associates to do the same. Mr. Tracy has this advice. He says that when people tell us about their problems, we can empathize, empathize with them and, and then tell them you're responsible. Then ask them, what are you going to do about the situation? How to remove feelings of guilt. There are at least five ways to free ourselves of guilt. First, we can eliminate self-criticism from our thoughts and conversation. We should refuse to say anything self-depreciating, such as, I'm a klutz, 
or I'm bad at math, or I'm a fool. Again, avoid saying anything about yourself you don't desire to be true. At the same time, refuse to let someone else speak to you rudely. If someone is rude, you can say, I'd appreciate your not speaking to me like that because it's not true. Negative statements about you, whether from you or others, can reinforce feelings of guilt or inadequacy if those statements aren't challenged. Second, refuse to blame anyone for anything. Accept complete responsibility for your life. Most people do what they think is right most of the time. You won't profit from criticizing, condemning, and blaming others. In fact, the more you focus on criticizing and blaming others, the more you'll lower your self-esteem, reinforce your own feelings of guilt and inadequacy, and use your energy negatively by focusing on what you don't want rather than on what you want. When you feel angry with someone, simply say, no one is guilty, I'm responsible. Third, refuse to let others manipulate you by trying to make you feel guilty. Every time you acquiesce in the demands of someone who tries to manipulate you by trying to make you feel guilty, you reinforce the guilty feelings and lower your self-esteem. Very often, it is the people closest to us that use guilt to manipulate or control us, such as spouses, mothers, bosses, or co-workers. When someone tries to make you feel guilty, you can use one of two techniques. You can use silence and simply refuse to answer. That is, you can say nothing or simply say, I'm not going to respond to that. You can be polite and courteous and smile gently, even if you're on the phone. You can resist the temptation to explain yourself. A second method to break someone of the habit of using guilt is the broken record technique. When someone attempts to manipulate you using guilt, you can respond in a low-keyed, non-threatening way as you say, are you trying to make me feel guilty? If the person says no, of course not, you can say good, because trying to use guilt on me isn't going to work. If the person later continues to use guilt, you respond in the same way, are you trying to manipulate me with guilt? Your goal is not to make the other person feel guilty or to punish him or her. Rather, your aim is to bring the unacceptable manipulation to greater awareness as you make clear that it is no longer acceptable. A fourth way to rid yourself of guilt is to refuse to discuss the guilt of others. Don't participate in gossip. Refuse to exchange negative stories about people. Refuse also to complain. Remember that your negative focus can poison your subconscious mind. Talk about others as if they were present and you wanted to make them feel good about themselves. In fact, by sincerely praising others, even to third parties, you can enhance your own self-esteem. The Value of Forgiveness a fifth way to eliminate guilty feelings and perhaps the most effective practice for producing health, happiness, and successful relationships is forgiveness. In fact, people are mentally healthy to the degree to which they can freely forgive offenses against them. What's more, the inability to forgive is at the root of guilt, anger, and resentment. Holding grudges and remaining angry toward people is a major cause of psychosomatic illness, producing anything from headaches, elevated blood pressure, and even heart attacks and and strokes. To fulfill your potential for achievement and happiness and to develop peace of mind, you need to forgive everyone who has ever hurt you in any way. We need to forgive our parents. Regardless of whether our parents are living, we must decide to freely forgive them for every single thing that they ever did to hurt us. For us to be happy now, we have to rise above the hurts of our childhood, accepting that our parents usually did the best they could with what they had. A lifetime of anger, hurt, and resentment is a terrible price to pay for something that can't be changed. What can, however, be changed is our relationship to what happened and our relationship to our memories and, interpret and interpretations of the past. In his book, Maximum Achievement, Brian Tracy mentions three ways to forgive our parents. The first, the most important, is to forgive them in our hearts. Every time we think of any hurt caused by a parent, we can use the law of substitution and replace the thought by saying, I forgive him or her for everything. I forgive him or her for everything. By constantly responding to memories of hurt with a firm affirmation, I forgive him or her, we can eventually release the negativity. A second way to forgive our parents is simply to go and see them or phone them. We can sit down with them to discuss what they did and why we were still angry. Then we can say, I just want you to know that I forgive you for every mistake you made in bringing me up and I love you. 
Brian Tracy's suggestion is excellent because by forgiving our parents, we set them and us free. A third way to forgive your parents is simply to write them a letter in such detail as you wish, forgiving them for every mistake they ever made. When we can forgive our parents completely, we can become fully functioning adults. By letting go of unhappy experience uh, we ha we've had growing up, we can release negative emotions and have mature relationships with our parents. Just as we should forgive our parents, so we should forgive everyone else who has ever hurt us in any way. We needn't like the people we forgive. We become free though to the extent that we forgive every senseless or cruel thing that anybody has ever said or done involving us. Many religions teach the value of forgiveness. Forgiveness makes sense spiritually but it also makes sense psychologically. Even from a self-interested point of view, forgiveness makes sense. Forgiveness is liberating and failure to forgive can make happiness and peace of mind impossible. Whatever situation we regret, we possibly or probably even had a great deal to do with our attracting it into our lives. If we're honest, most of the things we regret involved our choices. Even if we had nothing to do with something bad in our past, even if we were completely innocent third parties, we're still responsible for how we respond and whether we continue to hold anger and pain. We are free to be in charge of ourselves and our emotions. The Letter Some wise people, including the author Brian Tracy, suggest the following method for detaching ourselves emotionally from a bad relationship or a bad marriage. We can sit down and write the person a letter. In it, we accept complete responsibility for the relationship, asserting that we got ourselves into the relationship and we have no excuses to offer. We don't describe ourselves as victims. We also explicitly forgive the person for everything he or she did that was hurtful. We can spell out all the things we are forgiving. Finally, we end the letter by saying, I wish you well. The next step is to mail the letter, feeling liberated as we release ourselves from the person and the relationship. There's no need to hang on to the, to the anger. The third person we need to forgive is ourselves. We have all made mistakes. We have all done and said things that we wish we could take back. Yet, never-ending remorse and regret over previous mistakes serves no useful purpose. We can do our best to remedy any harms we produced. We can also apologize for any harm we caused. There is a time, though, when we need to let go of guilt, anger, and resentment. Just as others deserve forgiveness, so do we. We need to exercise compassion for, our, for others and ourselves. Summing up, taking personal responsibility is the first step in leading a happy, productive life. It is essential to our development and enormously empowering. It is connected to not only achievement but also happiness and peace of mind.